Oh, here we go. Hello, everyone. What's happening? Welcome to Thursday Live. I am Steve Leahy. How is everyone doing? I can't even talk. Um, how is everyone doing? Hopefully really, really well. Um, I have a few, just a few quick show and tell things. What I also noticed is that pinned comment. Ooh, let me turn that down a little bit. That's probably better. Um, that pinned comment that you see there, welcoming everyone, that is not the correct code. The correct code is holiday 23. So, um, just so you know, if you type in holiday 30, it won't give you anything. Uh, and we don't want that. Um, the holiday special is going on right through the end of the year. So if there's something that you would like, that is the code to use because it will save you 30%. I think I just had 30 on the brain there. Um, yeah. Yeah. So we got a couple things to show you. I'll show you some of the 543s from this week. I have, uh, I have a few of them left. Uh, and what I thought we would do today or tonight, depending on where you're watching, is um, I have finished the fifth painting in the series. I posted it this week, the Ferrari. And uh, that means I only have one left before the end of the year to make my um, kind of deadline. I wanted to have all six of those done in 23. So I might just pull it off. So we'll start that one tonight, number six or today or whatever. I don't know. All right, let's switch and we'll do some show and tell. And I will say hello to everyone while I put my head in the way. Oh, uh, boy, boy, boy. Cody, what's up? Simon Carter, what's happening? Simon, it's going really, really good. So, um, yeah, so I'll do the 543s real quick. Um, I don't know that this camera's... Hold on, let me um, focus this one. So, and oh, I'll show it to you here first. Oh, so it's actually still set up for Monday night, which is good. So the first one was pod racing. Uh, this is pod racing, which is the line from or now this is pod racing from the movie um, Phantom Menace, episode one. And uh, that was fun, that one. Another sci-fi one is uh, Captain Marvel. These are all in their little sleeves now. On Monday night, they're not in the sleeves because I leave them out. It's a little bit easier to see them sometimes. Um, but now that the feed is over and everything is done, I put them in the sleeves and get them ready to go. So uh, this is Captain Marvel, which is the marvels i'm having a blast with this um this um trending thing so this week's trending was fun too so i have a lot of uh, i think it's gonna be a good good thing having the uh one of the selections being whatever happens to be trending in the world at that moment uh so here's my hellcat logo uh it's a lot of fun this one's just called hellcat oh, however there is another painting a 543 out there that's called hellcat as well so I um, normally with big time paintings, they'll never share a title. But with 543s, I do so many of them. They're going to be paintings that have the same title. So um, I apologize for that if you have a duplicate, but it's not that big of a deal. I won't repeat a painting um, or at least I'll try not to. Uh, and the final one is uh, Care Bear, which is I am Care Bear, <laughs> which is my uh, Care Bear with the Batman symbol. So. That is, that is the four I have left. The other one was Ken Stabler, and that went to um, Donna Caparuso. And Donna, I know, I don't think you guys usually watch the, um, the Thursday feed, but I've been pronouncing their last name wrong since I have internetly met them. So I apologize for that. It is Caparuso. I've been saying Capuroso, and I don't know why. Because I'm adding letters, and that's not cool. Chris Garcia, what's up, buddy? Mike's brush. Mike, what is up, pal? That's awesome. Mike. Mike's awesome. Mike is my, uh, is Marge's favorite florist. All right, today's cheers. Sorry, I'm cheering without you guys. Today's cheers is coffee. Uh, there's a lot going on today, so I can't, uh, I don't really want to do an adult beverage with you guys because I'll be sleeping by four o'clock, and that's no good. So I'm running to... The Source Gallery uh, tonight, between 5 and 7, they're having a book signing. A local artist just came out with a new uh, book, and they are featuring it at the Source Gallery. So I'm going to head over there tonight. I'm going to um, bring Marge's daughter to swim. So there's a lot going on. And if, like I said, if I start drinking at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, it's not going to end well. So that's why I have coffee. Hooray. Um, do I have all this show and tell? All right, if, you, if you've been keeping up, one big thing that's going on, I'll do this first. If you have been um, watching the open studio, it's one of my favorite parts of this whole YouTube channel. I, I, 
I love the live feeds. This is great, but the the open studio is really what I'm having a blast with. Um, so we're working on that Harley painting. So I finished it. I f I did the last episode already. Um, uh, this week, this Wednesday, yesterday's was um, episode 65. So in episode 66, I finish it. So for episode 66, I thought I'd do something. Let me switch over this one. I thought I'd do something fun for episode 66. So episode 66 and possibly all of them after this one um, is going to be uh, set as a premiere. So I'm changing the release time of Open Studio. So instead of coming on at 10 a.m., a lot of you um, have been like catching up with it later. Um, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna move the time for the release of Open Studio, certainly next Wednesday, but I think overall, it's gonna be 8, 8 p.m. Eastern Central, Eastern Time. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set it up as a premiere. So I'll be able to watch it live with you guys and I'll be able to comment um, and answer questions live when that premieres. And I think it'll be a lot more fun than just, um, just, just letting the, the episode go. Uh, there is going to be a gap between episode 66 and 67 because 67 is going to be framing and I don't have the frame for that painting yet. So I'm actually going to start, I'm going to start the next open studio, not this Wednesday, but the following Wednesday. And it's going to be a razor blade painting. So it'll be a lot of fun. All right. So let me switch back to this and I will show you here. If you, oh, if you haven't seen the open studio and you're, you're kind of, you know, you don't want a spoiler. Uh, you can turn away for this part. So I'm going to show you the finished painting. And I will give you, actually, I'll give you this one first. That is the finished painting for this one, which I am extremely happy with. Give you the close-up. This has already been finished. It's got the UVLS satin on it. And I talked about that in this Tuesday's uh, Tech Tuesday. It, I just love this stuff. It really, really does a great job at kind of sealing it up and making it nice and even and it is all set all done there we go i see a channel member light up big mountain what's up buddy red cup day at starbucks you get freebies that's good to know still picking flowers nice <laughs> that's good mike Thank you, Simon. Yeah, I'm, I'm super happy with the way that it all came out. Um, so with, at 66 episodes, that means this painting took 33 hours because I, you guys literally can watch the entire process. And again, the idea behind the open studio was with the live feeds, this is what happens. I end up yapping and we end up you know, going back and forth, which I love, but I don't get a whole bunch of stuff done. Uh, so this way you can actually see everything where the, oh, the live streams are usually just like a demo, you know, for a couple hours or whatever. Um, if you want to, if you want the hardcore, you know, how does it get done? Open Studio is that. And I will always have Open Studio. I'm really, really loving it and enjoying it. So uh, the only thing I did not do in the Open Studio was clear this with you guys, which is what the uh, Tech Tuesday was about. All right. The other thing which leads us into today here is the Ferrari 430, and this is number five in this Pyro Red series. This is also cleared too. So I'll show you this one over here. It's a little closer. So this is how this one came out. And I literally just worked on this until it was done. Um, it's about 10 hours worth of work. So it, it was spread over about two days. And, uh, and I was really super happy with the way this one came out. It fits right in with the series and it's all it's all good. So today we're going to start the next one, which is or the last one, actually. Now I'll catch up with our comments here, too. Here we go. Thank you. Thank you, you guys. You guys are the best. Yeah, Simon, that um, that's a lot of popcorn. Yeah, no kidding. Um, yeah, this pyro red is, is just amazing. In fact, like I don't go through that much paint. I've gone through a lot of this, which is great. So that's the, the color through all of these is this pyro red. This is one of the opaque colors from Createx. Super like it. So this is, this is our next one. Now, this is like the Corvette. So the Corvette uh, that I did um, a couple paintings back uh, was bright yellow. The, this, and it belonged to a friend of mine, Mark Reeves. And this one, this car also belongs to a friend of mine or belonged. I don't know if he still has it or not, but um, it's, it's a absolutely beautiful GTR. It's got this tuxedo black paint job it's black but it's got like rainbow like flake in it it's, it's just an amazing car now it doesn't fit in the series the way I'm, I want now I painted this car before 
but uh, this time I'm going to turn this car red. So that's what we're doing. And uh, I'm going to take out my, you know, reflection there in my head. We'll talk about that as we go. But that's what we're working on today. All right, so let's switch over. Oh, that's my big head in the way. <laughs> All right, let's try that. There we go, Raffin. What's up, Astral? Hello. What's going on, everyone? And thank you to everyone who's jumped in and become a member here. Uh, the goal for 23 was to really get all the socials up and running and kind of get them formulated the way I want them and, you know, just have some some sort of plan. And that really worked out well. The end of 23 was about kind of getting the ability for you guys to help support me doing this. And uh, that all worked out great. So everyone who has grabbed a membership here who, or who has uh, done the, the Patreon or some of you have done both um, and anyone who, you know, purchases a 543 all of that is just what what fuels all this online content and honestly it's a major part of what i do each week now so and i can't do it unless i have your support and you guys have been amazing so thank you again and i'm going to keep saying that so i hope you don't get sick of it oh there's jc jc you missed the um the uh harley painting so you're still good all right so let's get right to it so all these um here's an interesting kind of semi story um this whole series I, I came up with this the end of last year the end of 22 so it was all set to go for 22 and i prepped all uh a bunch of aluminum panels for this painting series but i never used them i found them in the file with the folder for all these i just started doing them on clayboard when i started them and um so i have a bunch of three by four aluminum panels too so this is uh clayboard and what i've already done with all of these is clayboard the ampersand panels don't come in three by four, so I had to cut down. Um, I had to cut down a sheet of them, which is with this stuff is really easy. You just need a really fine tooth. I use a table saw, which is mint, uh, fine tooth. You know, detail type. Um, you know, chainsaw uh, chainsaw blade. Yeah, you can use chainsaw too. A uh, table saw blade, and uh, I put a piece of tape on it and cut it, and it comes out really good. And then you just sand the edge a little bit and, and you're ready to go. So it's fun with this stuff. You can literally cut any size you want. I mean, it comes in a number of sizes, but you can go nuts. And then what I did was I just put some Autoborn Sealer White on this and then sanded it. Uh, and I go over that in some of my, um, some of those Tech Tuesdays too. So you can jump back, but it's pretty, pretty straight, pretty standard the way that goes. What else did I miss here? Oh, Bobby, that's awesome. I didn't know that either. <laughs> yeah, it's a going, Bobby. I'm glad. I Oh, man, there's so many, like, names, and and I just, like, like Patrick with uh, cheese grits and cheese grits and NyQuil. <laughs> it's awesome. So um, I feel bad. I started watching Tim's feed uh, this morning as I was working. I was bouncing around a little bit. Um, I did miss it last night. I just, I, I just crashed. It was... Um, yeah, it was a long day yesterday and I just couldn't make it. So uh, I missed the live. Uh, so what I'm doing is this is just uh, 3M automotive masking tape, which I love this stuff. It's super aggressive, but I use it all the time for all kinds of different things. So what I'm doing is this. You guys have seen me do this before. The Vision Air setup is a steel uh, plate under this. And this is just a sheet magnet. So I'm just... Uh, taping this board to the sheet magnet so that I can just move it all around. I'm just rolling, rolling tape right now. It's not very exciting. I'll show you when it's done though. Here we go. Okay. So there's your four pieces of tape that'll hold it on here and that will let me kind of do everything I need to do with this. I'm going to hit this. This panel has been, um, sitting around for a little while so uh let me make sure i'm focused too here okay yeah so this panel's been sitting around for a little while so i'm just going to hit it real quick this is just thousand grit paper make sure it's uh hasn't got any atmosphere on it you know what i mean from sitting around uh, it doesn't oxidize or excuse me oxidize or anything but still um dust you know, this is in a folder, a manila folder, and, you know, who knows what could get in there. So I'm just going to make sure we're starting off on the right foot here. So this is uh, my old Scotch-Brite pad. So let's make sure that's nice and clean, and that's good. 
Table saw is a dangerous tool. JC, no kidding. My dad, before he stopped kind of doing all his woodworking, he got whacked really hard. Um, my my cousin, who's an, who's just an amazing woodworker, and I think what it is is yeah. So he got he got whacked super hard too. Um, I think what it is is like any tool. You know, if you use it all the time, you just become super comfortable with it, and that's when the accidents happen. You know, you're you respect it, and like my dad always taught me to respect stuff like that. But man, it's so easy to just you know lose where you're at you've done it a million times and that's exactly what happened with him and like jc said that stuff is gonna mess your day up pretty damn fast so extreme caution so this is the same picture as what i just showed you the reference except it's you know kind of brought down to um the actual size which is three by four uh, I forget who asked on the feed. A um, couple other little bits of show and tell. Um, and I'll mention this. I was going to mention this Monday, but I'll mention this with you guys too. I do still have, um, a f I have one of these left. This is the ornament from last year. And I talked about doing ornaments this year or every year. I only have one more of these aluminum panels. So what I might end up doing is... Um, I might just do one more of these um, and put it up on the site. And every year is supposed to be different, but you know there was there was like mild interest in it. And I don't want to do twenty of them if no one wants them. The other thing, Michael McClung sent me these awesome snuff tins. So I did six of these. I still have two of these left. So if if anyone is interested in these, these would also kind of fall under the the uh, the sale. So I'll probably put these up in bonus items. Um, that there, like I said, there are two of these. There are only six of these tins. And then last year, because those did, those were kind of popular. I think I mentioned this before. I found these um, cool powder-coated Altoid can, tins on uh, on Amazon, and um, I was thinking about painting some of these too. So I might get to one of these or two of these for the holiday season too, but uh, nothing too crazy. Oh, why didn't I mention that before? We'll get there. We'll get there. A little bit of show and tell, too, in case you were here Monday. This is how the uh, ornament came out for my lovely sister-in-law. It is all cleared. I cleared it yesterday. Uh, and this is Car Rep Clear, the 2K, in a, uh, 2K clear in a can. I painted the back, too. So that's how that one came out. Just finished it up and then did all that. It's easier to see it now. I did post a picture of this today, but you get a much better you know, idea when it's moving around, all the silvery goodness of it. Uh, this, the go the eyes on this, this is cool. So the, the edge on this is 23 carat leaf. The eyes are not 23 carat leaf. That's the Quicksilver uh, gold. And then the rest of it is Quicksilver chrome. So uh, you can see how close that is to actual gold leaf, which is really nice. So that is how that one came out. Put that back on the, uh, the stick. <laughs> Is that one and one other one I haven't shown you, but I know my mom is not on YouTube, so I can show you guys every year I do a, a painting for her. Um, the quick story is uh, 40 years ago, she, uh, she had her last um, adult beverage. She quit drinking 40 years ago, and she, 17 years ago, she had her last cigarette. Um, so every year I do one of these to kind of commemorate uh, that, you know, awesomeness. And uh, what I do is I pick something that's that's uniquely her. Uh, she has this little, my dad made this little, we call it the shrine. It's this tiny little, it's neat. It's like a little, I don't know, like a, how do I even describe it? Like a little, um, you know, like in a park when you have that bandstand type of thing. It looks kind of like that, but it's super small. It fits right on, uh, you know, on her, on her uh, in her kitchen. Um, so anyway, so the numbers go on that. So I, I, I make one of these every year. So she loves lobster. So this is what, what uh, I ended up coming up with this year. This also has car rep on it too. I do need to sand this and then put uh, another couple coats on it. I just put three coats on it and um, you can do all that, you know, like regular clear. What I find with the, here it is right here, in case you were wondering, this is uh, the car rep stuff and it's 2K. Uh, clear coat. Now, f I know this is our European um, 
feed. This stuff is made in Finland, so I'm sure you can get it um, over. I mean, I'm sure you can get it easier there. Well, you can get it easy here now, but uh, I'm sure you can get it over over on that side of the pond. Um, so this is the 2K clear. I like it. Um, what I do find is though, um, you have to really let it cure. It's, uh, it's not like a, you know, regular, you know, 2K clear where you mix the components and then the next day you can sand it. This stuff, um, while they say you can do that, I've had better luck really letting it cl uh, cure a few days before you go and sand on it. Uh, it's fully cured in eight days though. And, uh, and then it's ready to rock. So really neat stuff. And like I said, you know, if you can spray this outside and you wouldn't want to spray this inside, but uh, you can spray it outside and, you know, it's ready to go and no pot life. So that's kind of cool too. So there's the pitch for that. All right. Now I'm done with show and tell. I promise. <laughs> oh, brother. Dean, what's happening? That's okay, Dean. That's great. The dreaded buffering. Oh no, are we buffering? My cache looks okay here. I hope not. All right, so let's get to it. So what I need to do, this uh, image first needs to be kind of um, kind of figured out. I'm not going to do, uh, I, I was thinking actually about doing like a, like a red flake to mimic the kind of rainbow flake that's going on in this real car. But then it wouldn't match the other, the other five paintings. The other five paintings are just pyro red. So I thought then, you know, I'm just going to make it pyro red. I don't know what colors this car came in. I think this is a 2019 GTR. But in any event, it doesn't matter. This car is going to be pyro red. So it's, I know I'll have a bunch of GTR people, you know, freaking out. But um, too bad. So what I need to do is I need to kind of figure out and what we're going to do is we're going to base in the, the, all the, the red here of the car. I'm pretty sure the headlight, I'm going to make pyro red as, as well. This has kind of got an orange feel to it. But that's one of the decisions that kind of happens now. It's like what, what gets based in and what needs to be kind of adjusted. So I think to start today, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I'm going to work on the body of the car. And then we'll deal with the, the taillight at the end. Certainly the, the star of this painting is the taillight and the logo. You know, it's going to be really nice, those two things. Um, so I, I know I can keep that, you know, I can treat both of those separately. So we're going to work on the, the car first. Um, so what's going to happen is I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, cut out a mask for the logo and the, the light and then everything else is going to get painted. So I'm not going to worry about the shaded part inside the, the light bezel or the, you know, the body line here. Everything is going to be red and then I'll just, you know, do those a darker red. So I think that's the way we're going to attack this. So let's get going. Up to my ears in uh, direct gloss black. Oh, yeah, no kidding. It's awesome. All right. All right, Mike, have a good one, buddy. I will definitely catch up with you. Hope you're doing well, pal. All right. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll swap the cutting thing around so you can see what I'm doing here. All right. So again, like I do all these paintings, I'm going to, it's, it's blocking in, it's getting, you know, getting the big areas kind of in and then running from there. Um, what I, ideally what I'd like to do is, you know, have this blocked off and obviously the, the light is going to be easy to block off, but the letters, you know, are going to be a little bit more of a challenge to mask off. So what we might end up doing with the letters, I might end up um, cutting a mask for this. Yeah, let's do that. That's going to be because what's going on here is if I cut this out with and leave the just use the paper as the mask for this, I don't have magnets strong enough to hold tiny bits of this down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up getting paint underneath it, which not it's not going to be terrible. I'm just trying to figure out what's going to work out. Well, we'll try it. I mean, we we'll get to lose. All right. What could go wrong? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out the GTR first. This is a, a new X-Acto blade. I try to get uh, try to get new ones when I start a new project, but I also will just grab a new blade whenever I need to go grab a new blade. I never try to push a blade farther than it can go because it always ends poorly. 
you know, you try to get a little bit more mileage out of it and it just, you know, bites you in the butt. So I'm not super crazy worrying about the edges here. I mean, I'd like to get it as close as I can, but um, but I'm not overly worried because a lot of this logo is reflections and paintbrush work and all that other stuff. So I know I'm going to have to do a bunch of work to the edge of this anyway. Again, I'd rather have it closer than not, but not overly like, oh my gosh, is that a reflection or is that the black rubber behind the chrome or what? It doesn't matter right now. It's more important that I get the red in like in areas like that. If you guys have any questions, comments, or whatever, you can uh, yell them out. If you would be so kind as to smash that like button, that would be wonderful. Because the algorithm monster, that is how it gets fed. And it helps me out a lot. So that in there is my inside the R. I think that's going to be black. Look at the photo. I don't know. Actually, I don't think it is. I think that's that's car color in there, too. I thought it might have been this. This uh, this Chrome logo has a black base on it, and I thought that was all black, but it's not. It's red, so I'm going to have to cut that out, too, which is okay. So while I'm doing this, you know, I'll, I'll eventually do, like, the beginning of the year, I'll do, like, kind of the State of the Union post to kind of let you know what's going on and where we're headed but um one of the big things that i want to do um next year again is to build on all this so the patreon will be i'll offer more on the patreon um, i have a discord channel that that i'm working on that will be kind of patreon members only type of thing which will be fun so we'll do either another live feed on there or it'll just be like once a month, kind of a group Q&A. Uh, I have plans on bringing in special guests on the Discord. So we can just hang out and chill with uh, some other great artists. Uh, so it'll be a lot of fun. So I think that's, that's where it's going. All right, so a little light. I know one thing I, I say it all the time when I... I I oh my god concentric circles you know circles within circles um, are the hardest thing to do for me it's just it just it's so easy not to get them right and of course this this whole painting is concentric circles inside this light but hey what are you gonna do all right that's cut out so if you guys have any thoughts or ideas about where you'd like to see the channel go or YouTube or Facebook or whatever you can. Um, Feel free to reach out. Let me know. What do we, oh, has anyone tried sharpening Zacto on a stone? Simon hasn't tried it. The costume should replace a new one. I agree with Simon. Um, it's not so much the... the. Oh, I can't get it as close as I need to get it. Uh, let's try this. See if I can focus this on here. Oh, lovely. So, for me... I just, I hate to say this because, you know, here we go. I just use the tip, just the tip. <laughs> um, so what, what happens is that tip will break off, the very, the very point of it, or it'll just get dull. And then from there, you know, um, to, to resharpen it, to get that tip back, you'd have to remove all the material all along the blade, you know, like you, know, like you would sharpen a knife. And for me, that's, that's a whole lot of work. Um, so what I do is I just grab a new one, like Simon says. But yeah, you, I know people who do sharpen them, especially if you use more of the, like the entire length of the blade. Is this freaking people out that I'm <laughs> potentially slicing my finger? Um, um, so, so yeah, if you use the whole blade, if you're like, you, like if you're doing matte cutting and things like that, yeah, sharpening the blade makes a lot of sense because you use more of the blade and it, it just, it works real well. Plus, you know, I mean, I don't have the, the specific grinders to do that so the grinding wheels and everything but yeah you could do it i mean that's how they make them so here we go just there we go simon there we go <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, I got to keep up with Mike. I, I Mike Mike is one of my 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 favorite artists to follow. He's a blast. I'm glad he's cranking. I have a lot of favorites. Dread Effects is another one I like a lot. The Art Workshop I really like. Bill Kennedy is great. Tim, of course. Talk about Tim a lot. Um, yeah, I have a bunch of favorites that I try to catch all the time. Of course, the uh, the big daddy of all YouTube airbrush channels is... Uh, what am I doing? I'm trying to line this up. That's what I'm doing. Uh, our Australian buddy, down, which is what I meant to finish with that. All right. Uh, this isn't quite... This is... So th these little gray corners here those are supposed to be three by four but this is a little bit bigger which is okay so i just got to decide where it's going to go before i commit to it so that looks good right there it it doesn't really like it can be shifted around it but it will, once i put something down it's then it's got to stay there for the rest of the painting so i just have to decide where i want things all right so i'll drop this back in um i'm sorry i'm totally distracted uh, Airbrush Asylum is who I was talking about just a second ago. I like his channel a lot, too. All right. So there's that. And I know there's a bunch of other ones. So don't think if I didn't mention it that I'm kind of addicted to them. So, All right. So the GTR is the other thing I got to hold down here. You see how these magnets that I have? Make sure that's focused. Um, the magnets I have, you know, the, these smaller ones aren't going to want to hold through the, um, I'm going to have to tape this down. Yeah. All right. So here's the other way to do it. So, okay, the magnets won't work through the ampersand board because it's too thick and these magnets are too small. This one's fine. This will hold up really well. Um, uh, but this one here won't. So here's a, here's the way I would kind of deal with that. First, I'm going to pull this out. Oh, Dan was mulching leaves. Dan, I, I got to do that. I I already set the uh, last leaf pile on fire, which I don't necessarily like to do, and I'm trying to get away from that. Um, we have a lot of big oak trees on the property, and um, unfortunately, um, did I even cut that? I didn't cut that. Um, unfortunately, it's, it's hard to mulch oak leaves uh, on. Like if I just keep running over it on the mower, I have a neighbor who does that, and it's um, their lawn looks like garbage because the oak leaves take so long to um, to uh, decompose. So what I really need to do is I need to have some sort of major compost deal going on here. Not I talked about this on Monday. Not for the not for a garden or anything, although you could, but just to you know spread it around after it composts. Is this? Oh, yeah, it's okay. Sorry. All right, so, so I'll pull this out now. Get the GTR off. That's what I need right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing with the tape that I, you know, that I did with the, the, the panel. I'm going to make a bunch of uh, loops with um, FBS tape. Oops. And that is what's going to hold that down for me instead of magnets because I just need to block it off a little bit. Oh, last week's live stream. Yeah, I'm sorry about that, guys. I, I uh, Last week, um, we ran down... Well, I'm getting this ready. Last week, um, Marge and I and, and her two daughters went down to Cincinnati because Marge had a big show opening in Cincinnati, which was fun. So we left on Thursday at noon, so I, I couldn't do the feed. But, uh, yeah, it was a good time. In fact, the... I'll give you guys a sneak preview. The, um, the razor blade painting that I'll be doing starting on the open studio is going to be of Cincinnati. So I'll explain more about that later, but it's going to be like a skyline of Cincinnati on a razor blade. All right, so for this, so I've got a regular, this is three quarter inch FBS gold, which is the other tape I use all the time. Love this stuff. It's KUTG gold for this. So, um, so what I'm going to do is I need a bunch of smaller loops. This tape is obviously too big. So I'll just kind of cut out some strips out of this. And this tape does come in different widths. So, um, I use the, the half inch all the time and the three quarter. But you can get it as small as what I'm cutting here too if you find you do this kind of thing a lot. And then once I get a bunch of strips cut, just take them, kind of fold them over. 
try to fold them over. There we go. Make a loop on the thing and maybe give it a little bit extra loop just to make sure it's on there. And then you just cut it off and you can pull it up. Now I have this little, this little tape loop. So what I can do is I can grab this guy and just drop it on the back of that, like that. So I'm just going to rinse and repeat on, on for that to get to get this thing held down. Um, you could, if if you had a um, a spray adhesive like a artist spray adhesive, you could you could kind of put it on the back of this. A little bit of rubber cement would also work really really well. Um, and you know you just want something not very aggressive. So like 3M Super 77 or Super 90 is not what would work. I mean, it would, but you'd have glue residue everywhere. You want something that really, you know, has that, has a, has a removable, like, gum rubber type um, residue to it. So you can just remove it if it sticks to the board. Come on, babe. There we go. As I drop it. Oh, it's saved, though. So there's the next one. And depending on, you know, how skilled you are, you can cut these as, these loops as small as you need them. Like if I'm not going to do it, but you could, well, maybe I will do it. Let me um, put this aside for a second so I don't lose it. So if I want like a really small one, you just cut a real tiny strip and do the same thing. So I'm doing this obviously on my cutting mat. It's just really easy because the cutting mat should be clean when you do this. You want to make sure that's true too but uh, the tape doesn't really want to stick to the cutting mat so you don't lose any adhesive by sticking it on the cutting mat and doing this actually let me use my little toothpick thing so you guys can see what I'm doing so you just kind of form it into that loop and then just stick it down and if it doesn't look like it's gonna stick you can just roll it one more time and that'll give you a nice little tiny tiny loop of, of tape like that so that will go like on the T. Oops, as I drop it. So like on the edge of the T right there, goes on there. So that kind of gives you an idea. I'm going to only put one more on here because I don't think I need any more than that. Because I know I'm going to get paint underneath this. I just want to keep the bulk of it clean. Uh, that way when I go to you know spray in the white or the light blue for the, for the chrome, that I'm not fighting against like 100% red. That, I mean, you could do it, but it's going to take a lot of paint to cover the red, and this way it just goes a lot faster. So there's one more loop. Put that on here, and that, that should be enough. That should be enough to hold where it needs to go. All right, the, um, the original cutout, this guy here is my guide on where this goes. So I just drop this back on here. Make sure we're lined up fairly well. Yas. And stick this on here. Again, you know what? If I had some, like a little bit, of, I don't have any rubber cement. I haven't used rubber cement in forever. But a little bit of rubber cement, a couple dots on there would, would work super well for this too. So there we go. So now it's all set to go. All right. Now what I miss. I keep meaning to pick up some spray adhesive. I was, I was fighting a small paper mask earlier and reminded me, yeah, yeah, a good non, like, artist's spray adhesive, removable spray adhesive is awesome for this because uh, then you just spray the back of it. You, you would spray the back of this or in this, really, and that would really hold it down well. And when you removed it, you wouldn't be pulling up, you, know, you wouldn't be leaving glue everywhere. That's the, that's the problem with the more aggressive stuff. It's designed not to be removable, obviously, so you end up, leaving a bunch of it on there. All right, you're going to play nice, so that's fine. So we'll just connect a bunch of magnets on this so we don't... Again, this, this the light... Oh, uh, these magnets are jumbo. Um, the light, it doesn't matter as much if I get under spray on this because it's going to be dark red all around here anyway. And the, the only part that really stays white is the reverse light here. So, I mean, I could get under spray on that. It's not going to matter. But, you know, throw a couple extra magnets on there just to make sure we stay in good shape. Uh, pyro red. I need to order this. So, to give you an idea... I got these two bottles at the same time. This yellow has got this much in it. 
the pyro red's got this much in it. So I, I do love this red. I use it a lot. It has become my red. So my, you know, like the red I like a lot, use a lot. I'm going to move the reference photo because I don't want to get red on that. I'm going to pick an airbrush. Let's go with the Micron. So go with the Micron C. So I want, I'm shooting for coverage here. So um, I really should use something a little bit bigger. But I don't have anything bigger set up. Okay, then. Um, so bigger nozzle-wise, this has a pretty small nozzle in it, which is nice because it'll atomize the paint, but also i got to have to thin it out to get it to go through. You see how thick this paint is out of the bottle. So I just can't spray that out of this brush. It's not going to let me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce it a little bit, and I'm going to reduce it with 4011. Um, I could just reduce this with 4011, but I'm going to add a little bit of 4050 in there too. Uh, this is one part uh, 4050 to five parts reducer. So, and the reducer is 4011. So this, um, I had a great question on one of the YouTube videos too. And I, it was about the one to 20. Now I don't know if it was one to 20 black, which is this one, or if it was one to 20 reducer, which is this one. But the question was, is, you know, well, how long of a shelf life does it have when you add a bunch of reducer to anything? It's a great question. I try not to mix up more of this than I know I'm going to use in a couple of weeks. And, uh, and that's what keeps it safe. Um, I do have bottles of stuff that's like really old that still works. But if I can avoid that, I do. Um, so that's the quick answer to that. Um, for any of these, like one to five, I use a lot. So I'll mix up almost an ounce of this because I go through this a lot. Uh, the same thing with all the black and white. I go through a ton of them because, uh, because of the 543s. So I usually mix up like at least a half an ounce of each one of those. The only one I don't mix up a lot of, like we were just talking about, is the 1 to 20. I don't use a ton of this. So when I mix this up, I only mix up about 10 grams of it, which is about, you know, a third of this bottle. So hopefully... Uh, if anyone else had that question, there you go. So just mix this up. You really should let this sit for about 10 minutes to really acclimate, but um, for what we're doing, it's not gonna make a huge difference. All right, ready to go. Spray the whole thing. Now it's so easy at this point because this is gonna be all red, right? It's gonna be bright red. It's so easy to just hammer this on there, you know, but, uh, but by working with these really light coats, and I'm just treating it like a spray gun, really. I've got about a 50% overlap. I'm about, what, three inches away. What's that? Uh, uh, how many centimeters is three inches? Is it centimeters or pica? I don't know. I'm about this, <laughs> this far away. So I got to get my conversion chart for my uh, UK feeds. So that's the first, the first pass. It's got this really light pink, and that's it. Again, the if you kind of do this in really light controlled passes, the the red you're going to get at the end is going to be like absolutely meticulously smooth. Uh, it's going to have like no dimension to it, which is meaning like it's not going to be bumpy at all, which you can get when it's really thick. So for any kind of like even base coating, um, I'll still I'll still make just multiple passes over and over again till I reach saturation. Plus, when you work in real light passes like this, that by the time I get down the bottom, the top is pretty much already dry. I mean, you know, you don't want to do wet on wet with this stuff either. Um, it's just, again, when it's dry, when you put the next coat on, it just really, really just keeps everything nice and even smooth. Uh, this copy paper has dimension to it it's it's really thick copy paper it's you know the high like the high well I call it high quality it's 28 pound so what I got to make sure I do is I is when I get to the you know the, the paper cutouts that I kind of spray around it like this a little bit not super crazy but just enough so if I don't there'll be this like white halo around the outside edge there we go Seven and a half centimeters. Thank you. Do you use a strainer? Astral, I should, and I usually do, but this time I didn't. Where is it? This was made for me by one of Gerald Mendez's friends, and this is my, 
my go-to strainer. I do have a um, I do have a bunch of larger strainers that, that I made out of PVC that I did a Tech Tuesday on, but this this thing is just so cool since I got it. It's got a little micron screen in it. So yes, I should have actually just done that, especially with this, but um, I did not. So excellent question. Thank you, thank you. Especially on something like this, if you strain your paint, you know, you're not gonna get any weird chunks. So far we're good. There's a little black something right there. So what I'm going to do to get that off is I'm just going to let this dry a little bit. So the other GTR painting, the one I did with the logo, Scott McKay actually has that painting, which is cool. All right, so and then I'm just going to take the X-Acto blade and pick off whatever this little black nib is. A little bit more left on there. Trying to keep the you know the damage local, so that as I put on the next passes, I, it just covers it up and it's gone. Since we're on the subject of you know prepping your stuff, there's another little there's a hair on there now too. Um, this is big enough, even though this is only three inches by four inches, this is certainly big enough to be wearing a mask. You should be, you know, protecting your lungs anyway. Um, however, if I put my RZ mask on, you won't hear me. So I got to do the same thing again right here. Whatever this little hair is, it just landed on this. At least it happened now, early in the process. Oh, you little prick. <laughs> here we go. As I gouge the absolute bag out of this. Nice, you guys. Awesome. Marge and I were talking about that actually on the way down to Cincinnati, how how stupid it is that in the 80s I ran out. So now I will strain it. Um, in the 80s, you know, the U.S. started adopting the metric system. You know, we all learned it in school and all that. And then they just stopped. It's like, halfway through everything they just stop so when you buy a bottle of soda or in ohio they call it pop if you buy a bottle of that here you buy a one liter or two liter bottle however you buy a gallon of milk it's like we're like stuck halfway it's like come on guys either do it or don't do it all right let me um i'll use this little strainer so i can show you how this works Da, 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 da. Which, I mean, I'm showing you how I would use a strainer. It doesn't, <laughs> it's not that exciting, but I will show you. So these little paper cups are great. Um, I use these paper cups and then I will also, which I love a lot. I can find them. Yeah. So I'll use these little uh, measuring cups too. Uh, these are solvent proof. <sighs> little piece of paper in there. These are nice because you can rinse them out and then reuse them. The paper cups, they dry out and then you just, you know, kind of get rid of them. So we will use the plastic, I think. Since I got a few more coats to put on this, this will be good. So we'll uh, put a little bit of red on the bottom. I don't know how much I'm going to need, but mix it up. So there's about one, um, I don't know, about 30% reducer in there to the paint which is probably a little bit high, but I am working through the Micron. So um, normally, again, for good coverage, this you reduce this stuff about 10%, 15 maybe 20%. Again, I got to run it a little bit thinner because of the Micron. What I really should be spraying this with is like an Eclipse CS, a 0.35 or something like that. So there we go. That's all set. Rinse that out. Now I have that. Super easy, airbrush, strainer, this fits right on here. You just kind of hold it on. I've got it down so I can do it with one hand, hold the strainer there. Let's do this so you can see it. And then just pour it in. And just let it wait. Just hang out and wait. <laughs> You can help it a little bit, you know, by keeping the paint moving. This, again, this um, this paint is pretty clean. There's not a lot of chunks in it. But say I was using the white and um, there were a lot of chunks in there. Um, this kind of gently stirring it. I mean, I'm not 
touching the bottom. I'm just kind of agitating the paint and moving the chunks off the bottom of the screen. Uh, that kind of helps speed things up a little bit. So that's it. So I'm going to move that off to the side. I'm going to put the I'm just going to put the uh, strainer in the cup just because there's still stuff in the strainer. And I want to save as much as I can, but that's all ready to go. So yeah, if you can get a hold of a small strainer, it's, it's a great thing. Thank you, Astro, for reminding me. Uh, Scott's idea for strainer submission. Plumbers, yeah, that's perfect, Astro. It's great. Yeah, Simon, I don't understand. I don't, I don't get that at all. And I've argued with them as well because it doesn't make any sense because the full name is soda pop when it first came out so why would you take the second word instead of the first word we call it soda be and originally i get it originally there was like the no one calls it tonic anymore because tonic was something you put in your hair back in the 50s but that whole thing doesn't make any sense so i just obviously i'm I'm an Englishman in New York, so to speak, out here. So uh, I just do do what everyone says. So when I have to ask for it, I ask for pop. All right. So here's where things get weird. Not weird, but a little bit more challenging. <coughs> Excuse me. Hold on. <coughs> As I <laughs> breathe coffee into my lungs. Um... Once it gets to the point where you start getting close to saturation, um, it gets really difficult to see the, the light coat you're putting on. So the, my, the tendency is for me is to push it even harder, you know, to put more paint on. And that's usually when things go sideways. So I think I mentioned this before. What I do, and that's still wet, what I do, and I'll show you an angle over here, and I'll move the light a little bit so you guys can really see it. What I'll end up doing is I will tilt it so that the painting is at an angle so I can see the reflection of the light. And now when I spray that light coat on here, you can see how it gets darker. So I can't see that paint going on. I can just see the, the light, you know, the, the change in the wetness of the paint. And that lets me keep putting this on really lightly, but also evenly. Again, because at this point I can't see the change in color because I'm almost to saturation on this. So it's a neat trick. Um, it's you know something that's used obviously in uh, clear coating um, cars because you can't see the clear coat. It's obviously transparent, so you need some way to see what you're doing, and this is just a great way to do it. Because trust me, I've been there where I'm like, oh my gosh, I got to get this on there, and I just hammer it, and then and then you know it's it's blown up. So Angus Wad, you're the best. Thank you, sir. Oh, Angus, thank you. Again, you guys, the memberships and the, the just what Angus did right there, that is really what keeps all this going. And I, I, I am super thankful. Thank you, thank you. So again, I know, I'm sorry, UKers and anyone watching on that side of the world, Next Wednesday night is going to be super late for you. It's going to start at one in the morning, and I apologize, but um, I think you know for the uh, uh, for the West Coasters here in the U.S., which I never really kind of have anything for, it, it'll be you know it's it's it'll just be a little bit more helpful for them. But yeah, uh, it, it used to say reducing wicked ten percent, but now it says can be generously reduced for excellent fine line high performance. I'm I'm taking credit for that, Simon. I'm totally taking credit for that. Damn it. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I always, I'm always nervous about showing that, that hyper reduction stuff because, you know, you, you really do compromise the, the, um, the ability to stick at that point. So, you know, I'm always like, do it, but make sure you, you know, know what's going to happen when you do it. All right, I have used all the paint in that cup. So now what I'm going to do, because this is, you know, it gets to be important um, with this guy. You want to you wanna rinse out your strainer as, as soon as you can. So there isn't, you can kind of catch it. If I tilt it, you can see a little bit of some specks and stuff in there. But that's what you end up, you know, stopping from going through your brush, which is huge. 
but I don't want to let this dry in here. You, if it does, it's not a total like end game disaster because everything in like like the uh, most meshes that you can get are solvent proof, so you can actually clean them with just about anything. However, you know what? It's a drag when it's super easy to just grab a little bit of water and just clean it right out. You know, now it's ready to go again. I mean, yeah, eventually what I do, I get a lot of buildup along the outside edge of this, the outside, um, you know, like the outside of this, on, well, inside, but around the edge. Uh, and then you have to get a little brush in there and kind of scrub it out every once in a while as the, the edges kind of fill in. But, um, but for the most part, yeah, it's ready to go all the time. It's just great. Um, if you want one of those, I think I bought mine uh, because Gerald, you know, sent me the his buddy's name, who um, I forget where he is. He's somewhere down in uh, South America. Um, and I don't know if he sells them, but I, I bought mine from him. I think I got a Gerald Pass. and he. But if he does sell them, they're, they're very cool. They're not cheap, again, because, you know, whatever. But I like them. All right. What else are we doing? What else? What else? I think you should, man. I uh, should new TDS today. Yeah, I, you know, I never think to do that. I mean, and I have them all the time. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, I love it. I'm totally taking credit for that. I'm going to call Dennis after this and say, hey. All right, so there we go. So there's the rest of the red. This will do it now. I'm almost at saturation here. So I'll tilt that again so you guys can see what I'm doing. Yeah, I can't. I mean, this the value of this is not changing at all from this side. So if I were to spray this like this, you, you wouldn't even see anything happening. It's only when you kind of tilt it with the light is when you can really get, like pick up on that. And that works with everything. If you're like base coating this and you want to do it in, you know, lighter coats, um, kind of working at an angle like this will, will let you see it, especially with white. Like base coat sealer white, you can't see it at all once you get close to saturation. There we go. I've officially, excuse me, I got the burps and everything. I got, I'm a mess today. And I've also painted my magnets. So there you go. Now I got painted magnets. Anyway, so you see what I mean? That's fuzzy around the edge, but it doesn't matter because that's going to be a dark red anyway. So what I need to do is pull this off, but do it really carefully because I don't want to scratch that. And that, believe it or not, is going to be good enough. Now you can see the where the tape was. It's like a perfect, <laughs> perfect mask, but everything else is kind of fuzzy. But still, that's going to be so much easier to deal with than having this all be red and then having to. Um, if I wanted to paint this whole thing red and use the red as the base, I could do that also. What I would do for the logo then is I would cut out an adhesive mask. Well, first what I would do is I would paint the whole thing red, and then I'd go and put a couple coats of UVLS on it, uh, satin. So that way it would lock down all the red and then the red's all protected. And then after it cured, usually 24 hours, uh, then I could put like the, the, like a cut out adhesive mask of this and then respray this with like the light blue. That's another way to do it. Um, the only problem with that for me is then there's going to be a lot of paint built up on this. So when I go to clear it, it's just going to take more coats of clear to kind of bury it and make it smooth. So that's, that's why I kind of do it the way I do it. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, we'll save the GTR. I'll put that aside. Uh, I'll save. I'll save the tail light too. Why not? All right. So next up, what do we do next? Um, let's base in. I think the next thing to base in is going to be the, uh, the the darker area here. Obviously, I'm taking out the reflection of that head and the telephone wire line and these weird reflections right here. These are some someone standing there. All those are going to come out. Because what I what will happen is when I when I have all that stuff the distraction stuff taken out this really thin reflection line with that little starburst right there it's just going to pop and it's going to if it has stuff around it like all this stuff it's going to distract from that so I don't want that so let's um, base in this I think 
next. Can I use the same template? Sure, why not? Yeah, why not? Da -da 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 -da. I'm glad I saved this. So I try to save all this stuff and I'll show you why that's important in a second. Where's my mat? Where's my mat at? There it is. All right. Oh boy. I wasn't even going to start this today. And one of the nice things about the feed, I'm going to get all this tape off here now. Um, the, one of the nice things about the feed, and again, Marge and I were kind of brainstorming this morning and talking about a bunch of stuff. These feeds are really, really good at keeping me on track with a lot of things. Like I, I don't think the Harley painting would be done right now if it wasn't for open studio. Um, it, cause there's just so many other things going on and that's such an easy painting to kind of just put aside, you know, it's just so big and so like intense as far as the amount of work. Um, however, having the open studio and knowing that I had to produce a video of it every week really kept me on task, which was great. So same thing with this painting. Honestly, I want to get them done by the end of the year, but uh, there's a lot of stuff going on this week too, and this the, getting this one started, and I just screwed that up. Damn it, <laughs> that was shitty. I cut, see the edge there, you can see the gray. And that's enough not to work. Damn it, oh well. Pay attention, dude. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, keep it on task. So it's a good thing, like if you, um. If you want to try to like keep yourself motivated, make it like the like a weekly goal, whether you whether you think you can get it done or not, and uh, it will really like really push you to kind of keep things rolling. All right, now what do I do? All right, so uh, I guess we'll save the inside. I don't have to. I mean, I have to recut it, but that's okay. So this here. Well, I'll show you when I get to it. This this stuff here is going to be like a darker red, so I'll I'll mix that up separate. The TDS, the TDS sheet. I love people who say that, like the MSDS sheet. So it's the uh, technical data sheet sheet. Nice. Uh, that's red, right? Yeah, that's the that's the head, the tail light. So on this series of paintings, it's fun. You know, whenever I do a commission, I shouldn't say whenever, but most of the times I do a commission for someone, they usually get scared with what I'm doing right now as far as the composition. I mean, this car is a crazy beautiful car, and a lot of times when people want commissions, they they just they get scared about doing like a small part of the car. They always want the whole thing, you know what I mean? And uh, so when I get to do these for me, it's so nice to be able to just, you know, pick. Like the GTR is is really known for its tail lights, and it, it's been that way for a while. It's very much like the, you know, the four round tail lights of the Corvette or something like that. You know, the tail fins of a, of a Cadillac or something like that. So, um, so when I get to have some fun with this, it, 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 it pays out. So there you go. That's what I need. Move this back down. I don't know actually how far we're going to get on this today. Um, I'm just going to keep messing with it till we run out of steam. So line this up again. Now it becomes important to really make sure this is lined up properly because I don't want to... Um, Especially something this this straight ahead and this simple, um, it's easy to just you know assume you're in the right spot and then so you start and then you realize you're you're not even close or not you but me. Oi! Put a couple of magnets on this. Oh my gosh, this magnet <laughs> for real. This square magnet here, this is an, all these are neodymium magnets. This magnet here, when it's just flat on the Vision Air board, it is so hard to get off. It is like mega magnet. Alrighty, now we're gonna have to play some games with this one because again, I can't, I can't put magnets all along here like I would do on a, you know, like UPO, because if I get them too close to one another, they'll snap together like they did. So. I gotta kinda play games with it and I'll show you how I do that. So first let's mix up some some 
red here. I think, where's my, where'd my reference photo go? Oh, it's right in front of me. So obviously the car is, the car is black. It's got this rainbow, you know, flake in it. <clears throat> And then, and then when you get into the, the recesses, it just turns black, right? So with this, I got to kind of, kind of make an adjustment here. So it won't be as dark as this because it won't be, it's red. So I got to come up with a kind of a real dark red. Um, and the same thing for this, this body line here where the, the trunk opens up. Um, so we're just going to mix up a dark red. This stuff down here, I uh, left it. So we might be able to play some games with that. This, these reflections up here, which are the reflections of the reverse light, those I'll paint in separately after. So I don't even have to worry about those. But this down here is, is I can salvage this red here to get that done. I just got to remember that it's there. So what I might do is that I might end up cutting out a separate template. <clears throat> I should have paid attention when I was cutting the first one. But you guys have got me all distracted and I like it. <clears throat> I don't know what's going on with me. Frogs in my throat. After inhaling the coffee a second ago, I think I'm paying for it now. All right, so I'm going to cut out the reflections here, or generally what the reflections are. Where's my sheet again? That's black in there, so I don't need that, but I do need it up there. Okay. <clears throat> so we're just going to do this. We'll adjust it after. So I'm going to take this now. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do this. So I'm just going to cut a big chunk of this out so that this has, a, it has some meat on it like that. I'll show you why. Because now, if I just cut out that little reflection... This thing has nothing to hold on to, but now I can just kind of line this right up. Get that perfectly on there, and then I can grab another jumbo magnet here, and I could just drop it down here, and that'll hold the whole thing on. So now I'm in good shape. Okay. So like I said, if I cut out just this little section that I really wanted to mask off, I'd have to try to find a way to hold that in. But now that I've got the whole corner on it, it just holds by itself. So that's good. Mix up some red. Oh, I can use this. Use this cup because we're recycling. I don't need a lot of this, so I'll just add some red. Just need a touch of black here. Where did my black go? Come on now. <laughs> Wait a minute. I never lose black. Did I use it somewhere else? Oh, wait, I did use it somewhere else, didn't I? All right, so I'm just going to use the premix black. So these are the blacks that I mix up for um, the 543s. This is one to one. It's one part opaque black and one part um, 4011. So it's the only thing it's missing is the 4050, but I don't really need it. Ten millimeter exactly. Crying out loud. Let me um it's a little bit too dark. A little bit more red to that. This is way too much, but that's okay. It's also way too thick. Ah <sighs> okay. This needs to be darker, but I'm going to use it the way it is. I just added a little bit more 4011 to it to get it to go through the micron a little bit. Yeah, this definitely needs to be darker, but this is going to work for now. Da -da 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 All right, a little bit of a... Uh, so I don't even have to clean out this brush. It's got the red in it. So I'm just gonna run this through again. Get enough to um, 
get this started. Lovely. Honey Rivera, how you doing, honey? Honey, I was a mess without you Monday. Everyone was yelling at me. I went like four minutes over the giveaway. It was a super nice giveaway, though. It was a blast. Everyone was like paying it forward, which was great. Which reminds me, I got to get a hold of Tony D because I uh, owe him a painting. All right. So for getting this done, like I, like I said, I can't hold it all down with magnets. So what I end up doing is I do selective magnetry. That's my new word for today. Selective magnetry. So I've got the magnet on the other side of where I want to spray. And, and I hold down the side that, that, I, that I want kind of painted. And I got, we'll clear out some of that red. There we go. So it's the same thing here. It's, it's all about kind of getting this in, in, um, in light layers. But as long as I stick to where the magnet is, in fact, I'm going to use the other magnet to do this because the other magnet has more, more of an edge to it. Like that. So as long as I keep my fingers here and then the magnet on the other side, that's going to give me a really, really clean, sharp edge. I just can't go beyond the edge of the magnet because then obviously it's not being held down anymore and it becomes, you know, a mess. I was going to do, um, I'm working on the 543s for Monday. I was going to do one of those with you guys today, but it seems like uh, Thursdays have been the day for me to kind of do all the 543s or, you know, Thursday and then a little bit on Friday. But I don't want this feed to get into, you know, every week is the same thing. So I'll do my best to kind of keep things interesting and different. Honey, Jeebus, thank you. Yeah, honey, it's almost got me, like, after this series, I was just going to, that was going to kind of be it for a little while. But I honestly think I'm going to maybe do the next one with yellow or, you know, the, the pyrrole orange or something. Uh, do another series, you know, maybe not six paintings. The other thing I was thinking of, the, so I have all, all of these except for one. Um, Gary, she's grabbed the uh, 57 Chevy which is the first one. Um, so if I, if, if some of these don't get collected, if I still have all five, I may do a, another one. And that way I have six that I can display. But we'll see. Right now that's not, that's not it. All righty. So that is the body line. I'm going to move this magnet back over. Ah, oh, as I just put my finger in it. You guys... Ooh, I'll give you another super secret thing for 2024, which I'm working on now. So I, I've, I've always wanted some sort of swag product, t-shirt-like product, and I think I have a, finally have a good idea for it. So I'm going to be um, employing the, the, uh, the skill of other artists, and I'm going to have uh, specific artists' t-shirts, but they'll be with stuff from what I'm doing, so... That's what I'll tell you now, and it'll be fun. All right, so now I've got the magnets here, so I can peel this back to show you. But that that color is really, really dark, and that's exactly, I mean, like I said, I think I need it to be a little bit more dark there. But other than that, it's it's pretty much right where I need it. All right, so let us move on. Same deal here. So I'm going to realign that, and we'll start working up above here. So just move the magnet up to here. So now I'll do this section right here. This magnet could stay. It's close enough. But it's not really getting pulled around, but um, yeah. Now that I've got this painting started, more than likely this will be uh, what we'll do on Monday night. But for Monday night, I think I'm going to pick at this um, reverse light. It's it's really awesome. It looks like it's um, looks like it's water that someone like 
you know, messed up, like put their hand in and then made waves in it. It's really, really cool. So I might work on that Monday. Or I may do some holiday thing again. I don't know. Chevy Blade. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> Yeah, so whenever anyone asks, you know, like how I do this, if if it's rhetorical in the way that they ask, which it sometimes is, meaning, you know, they say, how do you do that? You know, and they just want, you know, me to shrug my shoulders or whatever, that's fine. But the other thing I'll do a lot of times, and I think you guys have heard me say it, um, I'll just tell them it's, you know, it's voodoo, beer, and hostess cupcakes. That's how I do it. So that's going to be the T-shirt. And what I plan on doing is I have one artist already lined up for the first one. And I'm just going to ask different artists to draw voodoo beer and hostess cupcakes. And then that will be the shirt. So that's the idea. But don't tell anyone. It's a secret. A nice marathoner's cat. Yeah, probably. Now, up here, I've broken the rules, sort of, with the magnet. And by the way, do you love my fingers now? <laughs> um, I can't put the magnet here because it's too close to the edge. So what this is going to take is working at it straight down, hoping I don't get tons of underspray, and knowing that I have to fix that edge. And I'll show it to you when I pull it off. It'll probably be fuzzy. It might not, but it, it, it probably will be. The same thing with this corner here. The magnet just will snap down on the, the, the uh, vision air and I won't be able to uh, get it to hold. So we're going to leave it right there for now. Simon, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. So I, like I said, I have a list of artists that I'm going to ask. And the idea is that each one of those shirts will be, you know, that, own, that, that particular artist. So it'll be a lot of fun. I will reverse this now like this and keep it going. <clears throat> and what I was also thinking about doing, if um, the shirts are popular, which I hope they will be, is to run a contest and essentially have a contest where uh, people submit their, their drawing of those three things. And then we'll do it like a, you know, like a online judging type of thing. And then the winner will win, you know, a 543 or a credit for the site or something like that. And, you know, and then we'll make their shirt, so. I'm going for the whole life is good vibe, you know. So again, this whole thing is just really light coats and letting it dry. And I'm doing it the same way. I'm not going to tilt this so you guys can see it. But this little area here works the same way as, you know, doing the whole panel. I'm actually, I tilted my head, so I'm looking at it like from down here. I know that's super distracting, isn't it? <laughs> I'm looking at it from down here so I can see the, um, I can see the paint going on just by the, the change in the, you know, the wetness of the paint. So down here, I don't. I care more about this edge than I do about this. So I don't really have to move the magnet because if I get a little bit of underspray here, it's not going to matter because this part of the light is red anyway, and it'll all blend out. So I'm not overly worried about it. The, this side I am worried. I don't want to get any of the darker color out here. Incidentally, um, you know, I mentioned the sale too, which is going on, which again, don't look at that pinned comment. That's incorrect. It's holiday 23, not holiday 30. Um, if you are local to Ohio and you're near the Source Gallery in Lisbon, Ohio, um, I've extended my, like the sale to his, to his gallery too on my stuff. You know what I mean? So if you go to if you go to a source and you you want the marble painting which is it which is there, 
you'll get the 30% off there too. So that's something that Mark and I talked about the owner and, um, and it made a lot of sense to do that. So, so that's just nice for people who want to like go in and actually browse the paintings. He's got a few of them. Aw, honey, thanks. All right, I think I've... Now, again, if I did adhesive mask, mix this color up, I could blast it on there and done. But I don't know. I'm, I've just gotten to the point where, like, adhesive mask, it just takes me longer to fight back from the edges. They're super clean. They're way too clean. So I end up having to fight more against that than the advantage of just saving time and spraying it out. You know what I mean? I hope that makes sense. Um, but that's what I found with adhesive masks. Again, there's there's a good time to use them. Uh, it's just that I've kind of moved away. So there we go. Hooray for that. What else can we do? Um, I should... Um, I should basin this part of the, the, if I basin the tail light here, the red part of the tail light, which is also going to be pyro red, then I'm, I'm pretty much got the whole thing based in, which would be nice. And then what we can do is, um, if you guys are Monday nighters as well, you can drop it into the comments what you would rather see. So I can do the, the lens, the reverse light, the lens, this part here. You can see how crazy that is. Or what I would end up doing on Monday night is doing the logo. Um, usually the logo, you know, that kind of thing, that chrome thing wins out, but that's also fun too. It's nitpicky, but, um, uh, but it's going to, this is, thing is going to make the painting, uh, between this and that highlight, all that stuff. Uh, so that's, you know, you can kind of drop it in the comments, logo or light. And, uh, by Monday, I'll know, I'm not going to take a, um, I'm not going to do a, uh, poll or anything on Facebook because, by that time, I'm going to need to have it all set up and ready to go. So let's um, let's let's base in the rest of the the, the tail light there, and uh, then this thing will be um, pretty much ready to rock. Just cleaning out this darker red color out of here. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. That's good. So normally, um, members members get the cool logo and a bunch of emojis. The more that grows, the more I'll be able to put in as perks. YouTube kind of limits the perks in the beginning until you get you know a bunch of members. But I'll be able to do a bunch of other stuff. So what I did was I kind of bypassed that. And if you're a member in on you know in the the youtube or the patreon you get 10 percent off the store all the time so when this sale ends you guys will still get 10 percent off you get a special code and um, patreon members also get um, an additional open studio each week so um so you get two of those one on wednesday and one on friday so that's fun too and then like i said i'm looking at patreon and we're going to do like a discord channel and i think we'll do like a meetup once a month where we just kind of hang out and talk discord if you haven't used it it's a real big gaming thing but it's just um it's neat you just it's like a big fat group phone call which is a blast like a zoom call without pictures essentially um so and it's also a you know like a like almost like a forumy type website so people can post their work. And like I said, it's, it's one of the things that's on the list for 25 is to get the uh, Patreon up and running. All right. Uh, it's going to be... Wait, what I miss? Oh, yeah, I can't see it. There we go. It's going to be logo in it. <laughs> Left to right, yeah. All right, so we're going to get the red in here. I'm just going to, um, the red, there's a lot going on in this red. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, I'm just going to, again, I'm going to base it with the lightest color that's in there. Now this is, I could just use straight up pyro red, pyro red, but I'm not going to. I'm going to um, mix a little bit of uh, pyro orange in there too. And that's just, what that does is that's going to give me that tiny bit of variation in this which will be nice it'll help kind of keep things from not looking just like you know everything's red so 
So I'm going to cut this out. God, do I love concentric circles, said no one ever. So that's the first one. Oh, I should do that too. I could do the R. The R is red too. I'm going to do the R in the same color as the tail light, and that'll give me my, my repetition there. And the reverse lens needs to stay white, so we're going to cut that out. Oh my gosh, yeah, it would make a killer Lumilor painting. Oh my, if, the, if I could, you know, just have the Lumilor light up the light itself and then paint it all with Lumilor, that would be amazing. All right, so those are all cut out. The R now. Oh, I need that part, but I'll get it in a second. Travis, what's up, man? If I missed anyone, hello. So the R will also be the same red as the tail light, even though it's, you know, not quite that red. It's a little bit more red. It's probably closer to the pyro red. But uh, we're going to um, use a little bit of artistic license here. And yes, absolutely, positively, if I were to post this on a, you know, GTR forum on Facebook or whatever, I would, I would guarantee there'd be someone who would say, duh, that's not the right red. And they would be right. However, you know, too freaking bad. <laughs> uh, did I get all that? I don't know if I got all that. I tried to get all that. There we go. Yay. <clears throat> I had one person, um, it was great. You know, I love car guys, I really do. But I don't understand how some car guys, first of all, will spend, you know, like if they had like a, you know, 57 Chevy or a, you know, 53 Corvette, they have no problem spending $25,000 on, on the, the period correct wheels for it. However, I had a guy where I, I painted his, uh, I, I took a picture of his car at one of the cruise nights. It was an Olds 88, beautiful car, light blue. I forget the name of the blue. Um, but anyway, I painted the painting and I wasn't expecting him to buy it or anything. I just, I thought his car was beautiful and I felt the need to show him after I was done. And, uh, and I, so I showed him and he's like, oh, that's really cool. Where did you get the Pacific blue or whatever color the 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 painting was and I'm like no I just mixed it up and he goes what oh it's not Pacific blue and I'm like well no I mixed it up I mean it's like and then of course he asked how much the painting was and you know you get that little mini gasp and I'm like dude the the interior of your car is three times what I'm asking for the painting for real and it's like I don't, I don't understand some some of the thinking with those guys and girls is is hilarious I just don't understand like, are you kidding me right now? I think that's good. Is that good? I don't know. We'll find out. I'll tell you how we're going to find out. Let me um, get this back in here, and then we will find out. This goes this way, and that goes on there. Now we can find out. So that's good. This part comes out. So we're going to pull this and see what we got. This is how I'll know because this part, um, the red part, I'll be able to see if it's lined up or not. And it looks really good so far. Yeah, maybe a little bit higher. Like that. That's good. Again, this is red and then red, so it doesn't, it's not going to make too much of a difference if it's slightly off. But again, it's just more work later, and I don't want to do more work later. I just don't want to do it. All right, so that's good there. <clears throat> Wait, what I miss? Uh, no tattoo artist in me makes me airbrush right to left. If you're right-handed you and you tattoo from left to right, your right hand will most likely wipe off the temple before you get there. Exactly. That's awesome. <laughs> Ow! That was my head on the camera arm. Will that hold it? Yeah, well, sort of, kind of, maybe, maybe. <clears throat> we'll do that. Okay. So, <coughs> excuse me. Wow, oh, God. 
Um, I don't want to get, you know, I don't get any red in here. If I do, it's, it's fine, but I'd rather not. Um, and for this, to save a little bit of time, I'm just going to, I'm not going to strain this. I'm just going to go for it. So I'll put some red in here. And the other reason I'm not going to strain is because I would need to clean out that plastic cup and I don't want to do that right now. So now I'll add some reducer to it. Get this paintbrush on this, mix this up. This is straight pyrrol red, right? And then what we're going to do now, if I add orange to this, it's not going to really change the color at all. The, the pyrrol red is an extremely strong pigment in it. It takes a lot of this stuff or a lot of something else to change the, the pigment. Black is also very strong. So if I add a drop of black to that, it's really going to change it. But the pyrrol orange is not strong in tinting. So what I got to do is I got to give it a little bit of a head start. And to do that, I use white. So I'm going to put two drops of white in here, which is 100%. See how that looks. What I'm looking at for is I want to bring that up just a touch in value in value. So that wasn't quite enough. So let me add three more drops. See what that looks like. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. So what it does is it becomes kind of a just a little bit more pink, a little bit more pastel. Now that I've got that there, now I could just add the pyrrol orange to it, and that will that will fill the gap. It'll it'll bring it to that kind of tomatoey orange that I'm looking for. I put like three drops of orange in there again because the orange, you know, doesn't have as much bite as as the red does. Yeah, that's lovely. That's just what I'm looking for. Again, this is the lightest part of the headlight or tail light, sorry, tail light. So, I'm going to be adding pyrrole red on top of this, but this is the base color. So, this is the the color that the lightest color that appears in this whole thing. And you'll really see the difference when I pull the mask. <clears throat> Same thing here. I don't want this going everywhere. So um, we'll start with the R, I think. That's probably the best way to go. Same thing, building it up kind of slowly. I could hold down the center of the R, but I know I'm going to get under spray on that anyway. So I'm just going to cut my losses and clean it up after. Yes, this is lovely. This is perfect. It's that pyrrol red, but it's got just like a like a, a hint of orange in it. Again, tomato red. Like if you play guitar, it's Torino red for a Fender Strat. Lovely. All right, now this guy here. Same thing here. I don't want this getting on this part of the the painting because it's it's black or dark under there um, again I, I gotta kind of deal with what I can get away with it's it's gonna get under there because I can't mask off the whole thing I mean again I could if I use adhesive mask but I don't want to I just don't want to you can't make me do it William <laughs> I know you love that, Bill. I love, was it Bill? Was it your brother-in-law who, when you when you had to switch over to Bill or William, wouldn't wouldn't let go of it, just kept calling you William? Or, you, or was it your actual brother? I love that. That was a great story. Bill, did you get all that sorted out? Is that all okay now? Yeah, Torino Red. There you go. I hope you did. Bill, because that sucks. My, um, I still am having a weird login problem with my tablet, but I think that's the device, not not Facebook, because I can get on everywhere. But uh, but I was blocked out of my Instagram for a little while, which was scary, because there's a lot going on on my Instagram. I couldn't log on, which was, yeah, there was a moment there. I'm like, what? Another little hair in there. So maybe I should have strained this. Where is Astral to tell me to strain my paint again? Because that was a good suggestion. Actually, I don't think this was in the brush. I think this was a floaty. Just kind of hit the dirt here. There's so much going on in this. That's never going to show up anyway. But, you know, try to do it. 
old page is totally gone. That sucks, Bill. And they didn't have it. Well, of course, you can't get a hold of anyone, so it's not like you could even even ask. I am super happy with this color. Now, again, almost, let me show you. It might make more sense when I show you. And I gotta be real careful because this right here is not dry yet. And I don't want, let's dry that off real quick. There we go. Yeah, I don't want the, the paper mask to drag across that, but there we go. I don't know if you can see it. I hope, I hope you can see it. It is subtle, but there, there you go with the orange and the red. All right, so take a mental note of this painting as it is. This is the, this is what would classic, classically be called the ugly stage of the painting, <laughs> where you're like, is that really going to turn out okay? <laughs> um, but again, what this does is this takes all the pressure off now, and what I can do now is I can start just concentrating on details and real subtle shading. I'm not trying to battle to get the whole thing, you know, the color it needs to be essentially. Um, there is one other part that, no, nah, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to treat this, if we decide to do the, uh, rever the reverse light on Monday, I'm going to leave the whole thing because that takes a little bit of kind of localized base coating, underpainting type of thing. Um, and I don't want to do that now. I'll, I'll do that when I do the, um, the other stuff. Uh, so the logo will be fun. Um, I may, what I think I might do, I'll do this with you guys since this will be a good way to end it. Normally I do this, I have a little spray booth here for, for just this very occasion, but I will do this for you just kind of out in the open, which is not a great idea for me health-wise, but uh, you guys are worth it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take Ye old Grex. This is the tritium with a 0.7 millimeter um, fan cap on it. And this is, I was talking about this in uh, Tech Tuesday this week. So I will give you, I'll give you the, the, spray on this. I will spray this for you, put the first coat on it, and you guys can see how it goes on. So for spraying this stuff, I use exactly the same technique that I used to spray the red. So I visually look at it from an angle, uh, and that's how I know how much to put on. <clears throat> I've got UVLS already pre-mixed. This is to the correct ratio. This is a little bit more than 10%. Uh, the, the Grex, the, the 0.7, generally likes it about 15 to 20%. But I always have a little bit of this again. This is, a, you know, an ounce. I use this all the time. This is what I put on all the 543s as well. So I do go through a lot of this. So I like to have a little bit pre-mixed. All right. So a little bit in the fan cap here or in the, the brush. I will tilt this a little bit so you can see it. And then you just basically I spray beyond the edge of the, the panel. It's really easy to just want to, sorry, to spray the panel. But, uh, but I, go, I go at least, you know, an inch, an inch and a half on each side. So I know that I'm getting, you know, I'm not getting extra coverage. If you just do the panel, it's going to be really thick on the edges and goofy and you're not going to get it, you know, good. So. So you just want to get it so that you can kind of see the, the wetness on there like that. Sorry, my head was in the way because I was trying to. Look, look at it. And that's it. That's all you do. Now what the hard part is, is you need to let this sit for 15 minutes. So I'm going to let that, I'm going to let that dry. So give me two seconds. I'm going to go put this in this little spray booth so that I get some air moving on it. And then I'll pull it out so you can see it. All right. So now what we'll do is we'll sit and stare at each other while we wait for that to dry. There we go. Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, let me switch over to this one for a second so I don't put my head in the way. Yeah, Bill, you definitely need a mask to spray that. It's a, it's a non-aliphatic clear, so it's non-toxic and non-flammable, you know flammable, but it's still not something you want in your lungs. Um, so yeah, I have a little spray booth that I, that I spray. And then we have a detached garage where I do any of the bigger stuff. Um, yeah, Simon, then that's one of the big reasons that I did the, um, that I worked to get verified on Instagram. So 
Um, it's easier to get back the accounts if you're if you got that little blue check. So I got to get that done on Facebook too for that reason because Bill's not the only one. And I've heard I'll switch over to this while I drink coffee. Um, I've seen huge accounts get like just just like hammered, you know, just disappear, and they had to start them all over. Now, when you have you know eighty thousand followers and your page disappears, most of the fans will hunt you down and find you and you can start up a new page. But for like, you know, guys like me and Bill where the, you know, the pages aren't 80,000 people, it's hard to rebuild that. So yeah, we, we you know, it's, it's one of those things you really got to take care of in the beginning because uh, bad stuff can happen. And who knows, like Bill, I'm sure he doesn't know what happened. I didn't know what happened when mine got, mine got whacked either. So so that's what I got. All right. So I'm going to give that. We're going to talk for a few minutes. I'm going to go pull that out of the booth so you can see what it looks like with the first coat on it. Uh, but until then, that's what I got. So, um, yeah, if you want to um, get in on the sale, please do. I extended it on the back, on the front side of it so that people could get, you know, get that that discount early. Um, some notes about international, since this is the kind of the UK feed. Um, one thing to keep in mind when you're purchasing on the on my site, it doesn't do the conversion. It'll show you the price in US dollars. Uh, but then when it obviously when it gets removed from your account, whether it's PayPal or you know if you use a car, uh, charge card, um, it'll do the conversion on it. So make sure you know what the conversion is between US dollars and you know your currency, because that can be a shock if you're not prepared for that. That being said, the 30% is the time to do it because um, if you do have an unfavorable um, conversion rate, the 30% will, will help you out a lot with that. So uh, feel free. I can ship to anywhere the U.S. Postal Service will get to, and that's most places. So um, do that. What else do I got? Um, yes, join me a week from yesterday right here on YouTube at 8 p.m., uh, and uh, we'll do the premiere of the last painting episode of the Harley painting. So you guys can, uh, we can interact during that. So it'll be like, kind of like, it's kind of like this, like a live feed, but we'll all be watching the video at the same time. It's really a neat way that they do that. So that's going to happen with that. And then we start a new one. Um, yeah, we're more than likely going to start the new painting the following week because I won't have the frame ready for, for that. But I'll get the last episodes done on that with the framing and everything. So you guys will literally see that right from the beginning to end. Um, and that's what I got. So let me go grab that. I will switch over to something else. That one. So you have to look at a blank chair. <clears throat> because right now, hold on. That's the other thing too. You don't want to put this stuff on too wet. You don't want to, it's not like a heavy build clear where you, you know, really got to soak this thing that, you know, you get those heavy medium coats. It's not like that. It's better. If, I find it's better if it's on, on what, you know, on a thinner side. So here is one coat, but you see even with one coat and I'll switch to the other camera too. Even with just one coat, see how that just evens everything out. It's just fantastic. So what I'm going to do, I'll do it for you right now. I'm going to hit this with another coat. I'll probably put three or four coats on this and then it'll be ready. So ready for everything. It'll be pretty much bulletproof uh, for the rest of the painting. I'll be able to mask on it. You can mask on Wicked anyway, but this really makes sure that everything stays where it should. I do this so you guys can see it and I can see it at the same time. No. Yes. Yes. Maybe. All right. Yeah, I think that's good. I I ran out. Damn it. Should have checked before I started spraying. This I should absolutely strain, which... Um, which I did not. So there's coat number two. So I'm going to just go through that in the thing and then I will uh, jump back and we'll finish it up. <clears throat> okay. 
Yay. Not that one. This one. That's what I got. All right. So thank you, everyone. That was awesome. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for inspiring me to get started on that new one. Again, Thursdays are usually 543 day. So I would have been uh, cranking on 543s um, all day, which I will be for the rest of the day. But um, that's a nice thing that I wouldn't have started that painting if it wasn't for you guys. So I appreciate it. Thank you again so much to the people who threw uh, the super chat on there and uh, and the uh, you know the memberships. I, I truly truly appreciate that. Like I said, it really keeps things going, and uh, that's what I got. So um, yeah, so hopefully see you Monday. Have a great weekend, everyone. You guys are the best, and uh, I will um, catch you guys next time. Thanks a lot.